risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 136 of the Scholars of Wrestling show. I am your man behind the microphone, Scholar Jeff. To my right is the one and only Scholar Tarek. What's up, sir? We were on a highway to hell in a cell. Highway to hell in a cell. Music references for the win. <laughs> and to my left is the insatiable scholar Brian. What's up, sir? Beep, blop, boop. Does your butt still hurt? A little bit. <laughs> well, there's nothing we can do about that, but there is something we can do about this week in professional wrestling. And what better way to kick it off with a little bit? of backstage news indeed don't worry brian i'll give you the hemorrhoid cream you so need as we peek behind the corner and check in on a little backstage news news news, news. hemorrhoid cream Meh. <laughs> well speaking of hemorrhoids i'm and things that won't just don't won't seem to ever go away apparently tna is still alive somehow it's actually funny. When I actually read about them kicking uh, Billy Corgan to the door, or out the door, mind you, my immediate response is, why won't you die? Yeah. TNA has become that woman in Austin Powers that just takes a parade of bullets, gets thrown out a window, and still turns and says, you can't win, Powers. It's just a flesh wound. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> but to bring everything full circle here, That's to, actually in, a case you did, in case we, and no one is aware, apparently Anthem Entertainment and TNA have entered a what they call a credit relationship, where basically this company, Anthem Entertainment, will continue to keep funding TNA in order so they can keep producing episodes. And most likely still leave their wrestlers with absolutely nothing. nothing. Unless you're Matt Hardy, in which case you are the rock star of the whole damn universe. Apparently, uh, we did. if nothing else, we did still get confirmed that uh, Total Nonstop Deletion, the Hardy-centered episode, is still going to be happening. Hmm. Which is really the only thing I really care to see in TNA right now. I'm not going to watch it. I am it's, well aware. It's one, of, it's, it's one of those golden nuggets on top of a pile of shit. <laughs> there you go. That's it. I'll just... for you call, you call it a golden nugget, I just call it the big piece of corn kernel that is just sitting right on top of that shit. <laughs> okay. Or, better yet, back to a movie reference. <laughs> See, the peanut? Dead giveaway. <laughs> yeah, it's a space peanut. <laughs> it's uh. one big old pile of poopy. Dude, you are eating off it. <laughs> Please, uh. T TNA, do what's good for you. Do what's good for your wrestlers. Let it go, man. <laughs> Let well, it go. You, you, now I feel like we're just talking to a wall because when you're saying TNA... You're meaning Dixie Carter. Yes, yes, I am. So once again, wall. It, it, Dixie and the Carter fact is nothing that the more. Judges basically said fuck you to uh, what's his name, Billy Corgan. Billy Corgan. They they said they denied his injunction, and, and they, that's they, the worst part of I'm, it. I'm like, I'm like, well, <laughs> mm. way to go, judges. Way to say fuck you to. The man who could save yeah. TNA. Yep. Instead, you leave it to the woman who is in slowly injecting it with a lethal dose of poison. Yeah, well, Except it's else. not exactly slow anymore. <laughs> but no, 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 no. It's not that it's not that it's not slow. It's just that this poison has been being injected into TNA for years. It's slowly starting to kick in. There is no immunity to, uh, to this iocane no. powder. Back to movie references. I, I, I won't stop. Hey, at least that one was moderately uh, wrestling related. It still counts. Okay. If nothing else, <laughs> let's talk about enough of the poison and iocane powder. Let's talk about some good news, for instance. Like, for instance, it looks like Akira Tozawa will be go officially joining the, the WWE. As he said, according on to his Twitter, he did just recently post something to... Um, to Dragon Gates, thank you for 12 years. 
which indicates to me that it could be coming back to WWE to rejoin their cruiserweight division. Imagine a so total swerve if we see him at the end. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, why? I, on, well, I, I don't know if this is one hundred percent true. I've actually read a couple of things that they're that the network is going to be doing its own cruiserweight show. That's confirmed. That yep. is confirmed. Uh, okay. WWE two hundred five live on the WWE uh, November twenty ninth or something like that. I believe so. It's, yes. It starts. So does that it's, mean it's right after SmackDown? They said they'll still be on uh, Monday Night Raw, but, okay, they now get a full hour show to themselves. Good. So, But that'll be after SmackDown, which is kind of mixed signals, so I don't really know. <laughs> well, the only way, how is it mixed signals? They're still on Raw, but the, the show comes on after SmackDown. <laughs> Well, it's probably the whole. It's probably just the extra hour that's right after SmackDown. Yeah. It's still too much. It, it's six hours of wrestling, two nights in a two nights in a row. Oh, like space that shit out, man. <laughs> I I here's what here's what I would have done. I would have done the way they had it with the CWC. You have it after the one hour NXT. You have the one-hour cruiserweight Wait, show. Wait a minute. Wait, you're saying it's after SmackDown? It's after SmackDown. What happened to Talking... What's going to happen with Talking Smack? Uh, I believe that was pushed up to a later time, maybe. I mean, even though, I'm, I'm not even sure if that's confirmed I, I yet or not. Yeah, the smarter... The smarter move would have been to put it where the time... In the time slot where the Cruiserweight Classic was. Mm-hmm. Because it's like it's already there. It's already known that people will watch it. <laughs> okay, but but this is WWE. They don't know how to do the right thing, and, especially and when also, it comes to the cruiserweights. And, I, and I'm like, talking smack is probably the best thing you ever did for someone like the Miz. <laughs> Hell, talking smack is just a great thing. Yeah, it really so is. What, I'm I'm like, why mess with what you got? Okay, you have the three hour roll where you're destroying the cruiserweight division as it is you've got smackdown which is the best thing you have with the best storylines you got okay then you have the block of nxt and the cruiserweight division that would have been what i would have done but the wwe is not me so that's it well, the only way i can i can really see this working if they recorded if they recorded after SmackDown, don't let it be live. Have it just be one a recorded sh a recorded show and then air it, as you said, Brian, in the hour for the Cruiserweight Classic. Which is what a lot of people are really suspecting that this is going to end up being. Oh, the really people? I, <laughs> I it's it, granted this is all speculation right now, but and again, when is it supposed to take place? November twenty ninth. Twenty ninth, the end of November. Okay. But yeah, the the smart thing is just record it after SmackDown so you can give the SmackDown audience that third hour that apparently they kind of want to crave. I, I don't know. But yeah, it's record it Tuesday, air it Wednesday, keep talking smack right after SmackDown. Which is my guess. It will, probably won't. I wouldn't be shocked if this ends up happening within the next three months. By January or February, I think it's going to go to pre-tape. Which will still be good. It's still qual. It should still be quality. But until then, gentlemen, I believe we have a pay per view to cover in Hell on the Cell. Whew. Oh, man, that trip through hell was uh, very, uh, you know, warm. I was expecting I you to say hellish. You can say he you can go with hellish. All I know is that just walking through it, I think I lost ten pounds in sweat. Mm. <laughs> well, let's get into I what could so possibly light. cause that. First off on the pre-show, speaking of cruiserweights, uh, I think we all called this one. We had the team of Cedric Alexander, Lince Dorado, and Sin Cara defeating Tony Nese, Drew Gulak, and Arya Davari. With the amount of time this match had, this is pretty much the best they could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really. So There's th really, there really wasn't anything bad. There just... wasn't anything bad. There wasn't anything like out-of-the-way special. Or whatever. It was pretty much with the amount of time they had. They had nine and a half minutes. 
they did what they could with that time, and I've got nothing to complain about. All the one thing you're gonna hear from me uh, quite a lot with this review is going through the motions. This was a good. This was a good cruiserweight match. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take anything away from it, but. As but Brian said, it was wasn't anything spectacular and it wasn't anything bad. It was just there. And like I said, enough just going through the motions. It was not even real storytelling. It was just a typical match. Going through the motions and just in in out. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for watching us. Good night. Mm-hmm. Well, in some ways that wasn't bad. Some other ways uh, it was really lackluster. But again, I'll save my thoughts for later on in the show. Uh, moving on to the show proper, however, the first Hell in a Cell match of the night, Roman Reigns defeated Rusev to become the new U.S. title champion. You mean to sex, sex, yeah, successfully defend the U.S. title? Oh yeah, I did say that. Yes. No, you said he what that he's now the new crowned U.S. champion. Yeah, I wasn't really paying attention to this whole feud. It's like, yeah, Roman Reigns, Z. Well, I'm, here. Plus, I'm so used to ro to that to Rusev be, just having the strap that I'm like, oh yeah, Roman Reigns has it now. What am I thinking, Bloy? I actually did. I liked the match. The one only complain, and really, it's kind of a complaint that a lot of people have. Is the fact that Roman Reigns just took, let's see, chair shots, two accol two accolades, one with a my steel chain. My problem was the one with the steel chain. I I was like nobody should be able to. Not even John Cena or Roman Reigns should be able to get out of something. That was cinched in. Yeah, it was under his, and as in his jaw. And then brothers. he let it. He let the chain go, and I was like, "What the hell, man?" You didn't see that meme. No. There's a pic. There was a Brazzers picture with Roman Reigns having the chain in his mouth. <laughs> okay, um... and that's all that needed to be said. But it only took one spear to end Rusev. A leaping spear. A leaping spear because you know all he was on the steel. He was on the steel, the steel steps. Stairs. Ooh. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It Fancy. was still. It's still the one. It's still the fact that. Roman Reigns beat Rusev with one spear after pretty much getting his ass handed to him which is most of the much, match. Which is pretty much the norm with Roman Reigns matches. Um, I agree. I I agree with a little bit of what you said. I disagree with the beginning of the match. I was bored. Okay, it's about half till about halfway through. The beginning was just slow. It was punching and and just slow moving and plotting. And I'm like, this is a Hell in a Cell match? Are you serious? <laughs> and then about halfway through, they started picking it up. And I was like, oh, here we go. Here's the Hell Brutality. in a Cell match. <laughs> oh, here it goes. Brutality. Nice. Because the first half of this match, I was like, why did this need to be in a cell? Seriously. And then the second half started and the brutality started coming out when they bought out the weapons and stuff and I'm like oh it only took 15 minutes to get here but hey we still <laughs> made we're we started from the bottom now we're here well you gotta get and, and then and and then just the stupidity with the I can deal with the one accolade I can deal with the regular ho-hum accolade Roman Reigns getting out of it because you knew he would mm -hmm. you knew he would mm -hmm. you called it but when you're on the steel steps with a steel chain wrapped around your throat. It was in his mouth. Come on, Brazzers. Wrapped around. <laughs> okay, it was in his mouth at the end before before Rusev figured it out and let go of the chain, which was stupid to begin with. <laughs> as soon as he let go of the chain, I was like, you're a dummy. <laughs> oh, boy. It was real to me, damn it! <laughs> well, you gotta, you gotta give it to this Hell in a Cell match. It's the only Hell in a Cell match that actually drew blood out of Roman Reigns' shoulder. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck that. This was you have to, I have to pull out my sarcasm sign for this one. This, oh, this was... This, I think we can all agree that this was the worst Hell in a Cell match of the night. Doesn't mean that yeah. the match itself was bad. 
just it was the weakest. It was it it was weak. the The first half was like, why did this have to be in a Hell in a Cell? The second half was pretty good until the stupidity of the ending. <laughs> well, you ask why is this this have to be in a cell? Because Vince McMahon's Golden Boy is in it. Well, then act yeah. like it and give him the be- and give them the best stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Act like he's your golden boy, and maybe we'll treat him like one. <laughs> That's it. Wait, they wait, don't. Wait. That doesn't make sense. Treat him at uh, act. Treat him as your golden give boy. And we'll him give him good stuff. <laughs> give him good stuff to do, and we might actually think about it. In That's terms the of content, not process. Exactly. Don't push okay, him to the top you if you don't have anything interesting to do. Exactly. Don't give him a hell in a cell match if you're not gonna give. If you're not gonna give this guy your golden boy the best the best stuff to do of the night, mm-hmm. okay, this was fucking dumb. Okay, <laughs> Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt in a Hell in a Cell. That was a great Hell in a Cell match. It actually gave me hope for Roman before they started him talking again. <laughs> Didn't he call <laughs> Owens and Jericho like? Beavis and Butthead or something this past Spongebob and Patrick. Spongebob and Patrick. <laughs> that is what's wrong with Roman. I gave him the good the good duo. I gave him a good duo. And then you had... To, no, no. They gave you the Nickelodeon duo. Joke's on you, tough guy. People hey. like Spongebob. Yeah. Little children like Spongebob. If you give him good... Uh, and stoners. I, I, I am neither one of these things. Well... It's Did still... you actually like that? Duh. SpongeBob and Patrick reference on no, Raw? No, I'm just talking about okay. SpongeBob SquarePants in general. It's like okay, I was just got, no, no. <laughs> Sponge now. Here we go. SpongeBob sucks now. He was good then. He was good Close when he enough. first showed up. He was good when he first showed up, and now they kind of drew him. They pretty much much just like Roman Reigns beat himself. on a dead horse. Much like Roman Reigns himself trying to milk. If a dead there's cow. good content. He has a shot, but WWE Creative refuses to give him good content. Hashtag fire Kevin Dunn. Mm. Yes. Hating an Irish accent, you fat fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I knew you were going to bring that up. (laughs) But yeah, it had to. We love you, Becky Lynch. (laughs) Yes, we do. Don't ever change. Let's stop talking about Roman. Yes, I think we said enough. Let's talk more about the ladies. We've got Bailey defeating Dana Brooke, and I think we all called this one. I'm going to say perfectly, this actually was the worst match of the night for me. It was the worst match of the night, but hey, Dana didn't fuck up, so kudos to you. (laughs) It is the biggest, it is, once I'm going to pull out this this card again, this was the most straight up, going through the motions I have ever seen. This match had no story to it. It is just move A, move B. Bailey trying to make, trying to carry Dana Brooke in this match. The only good Dana Brooke did was go after the arm. But it's like, oh, he's getting, she's gonna give her a, ba- a Bailey to belly, reverse. It's like reverse, go after the arm. Are you kidding? Bailey to belly, one, two, three, win. And I gotta say, my big problem with this match was not Dana Brooke. My problem was with the selling of Bailey's arm. <laughs> At least she stuck with the same arm. Yeah, that's Imagine. good. <laughs> Imagine if she started going after the, the, another arm. Bailey, what are you doing? <laughs> You're supposed to be going after my right arm, you stupid idiot. No, but my my problem was that Bailey kind of pulled off of the selling of the injury when when she started doing her signature moves. Like, if her arm was that screwed up, she couldn't do the Bailey to Bailey. <laughs> that, that's, why, that's why the main event was so much better than this, because the selling was awesome in mm. the main event. But this was just, it was fine. Mm. It was there. I can't even give it that. It didn't suck. I, I can't, I, it didn't suck. They went, th- they went through the motions, yes, but there were no obvious screw-ups. And... Just the selling was off and the story was off. The sto- the story was off with this feud to begin with. Oh well, yeah. This mm, was just right. filling the void. This this was the pee break match of the night, and, but it was fine. Yeah. Odds are, if 
there if there's going to be any any mercy from the writing team hopefully this will end the feud and move bailey on to something better because she's capable well based of so on more. based on raw they're starting the bailey and charlotte feud well you? there you go so all is well yeah well anyway moving on next we have the club defeating en- enzo amore and big Cass. this one was a little surprising what do you mean surprising? You called it. I know. I didn't expect to be right. <laughs> yeah. We didn't expect it to either. Sometimes, you know, this is why I take the optimistic route sometimes. Sometimes. To, yeah, sometimes. 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 Sure. Well, hey, because you never know when WWE is going to throw you a curveball. I'm like, you know what? It nothing, shouldn't nothing. have I to be a by, curveball. But you know what? No. I stick by my my rationale. They really did need this. Oh, yeah. They did need this. They did need this. There should there should be no curveball involved with this. This should be an easy win for the club. Well, Us not, even thinking. I can't even... Uh, that I have to stop well, you there. It really can't be an easy win. It's just... It would be a big win for them because of who they're facing. Yeah, it's, it's one of those where this should have never been a curveball. Because we should have never thought that there was no shot that the club was going to win mm-hmm. on pay per view. That that's what I meant. Okay. By by that there there should have with these two guys there should never have been a reason for us to doubt that they would ever win a pay per view match. Okay. And that was our rationale going into our picks. It was like, they haven't won a pay-per-view match since they got here. <laughs> you know what the sad thing is? You know what the sad thing is? It's like, oh, good, they won. This may be something good for them. And what do they do the next night on Raw? Pull on a Halloween-based match with Ken... A- uh, Ken with, uh, I called You were going to say Ken Anderson. Once. Yes, I was going to say Ken Anderson. <laughs> wow. I called that Carl Anderson was going to get the pie. I well, called it at the beginning of the match. This <laughs> this should have been a Golden Truth, Shining Stars, Titus O'Neil bullshit segment. Giving this to Enzo and Cass in the club completely takes away what they or what they did in Hell in a Cell the night before. Mm. You can't. It does, you, dude. No, you can't. You, can, you can't put this oh, series. Oh. These two top contending teams. And put them in the joke segment. And, and the, the joke and gimmicky the club, fun match. The club got some of their heat back. Like people started caring about them again. And and then the next night you get the you you get one of them taking a pie to the face and falling in the ho- the table, in the Halloween gimmick the, match. And you get and you get the biggest guy in the tag team division. With a, with a pumpkin on his head. <laughs> I'm it. not denying it was a bad move. I'm just tr- th- honestly thinking to myself, how much was lost here? I think a lot. Yeah. Completely honestly. I'm, I'm like, you tr- You tried to... You gave... It, it was kind of like watching Raw. They gave them a mercy win. At the pay per view, after mm. watching what after watching what happened yeah, on Raw, I just it really wasn't wish an earned, I didn't have to call it that. It wasn't an earned win. They gave them a mercy win so they could make them look like idiots the night after. You know what this is? I'm gonna pull. I'm, once again, I'm pulling a movie scenario here, but this is kind of like a movie like I'm making up. This is like in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Let's say Thanos comes in and kills a major major character, and the next thing he does. Is trip over a gumball. That's what that. That's what this was. I gotta give it. You can't, can you really I, argue that? And the fact. And the fact. I wouldn't say only in in the sense of severity, but your point is still made. And the fact that I called exactly what was gonna happen to Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. I said at the beginning of the match that Carl Anderson was going to get pied and Luke Gallows was going to get a pumpkin over his head. I said that. The fact that I could actually... Oh, you said that during Raw? I said that during Raw. Okay. Before the match started. Okay? The fact that I could do that and be correct shows you how bad the booking is (laughs) for the WWE. Hey. I should not be. I. I mean, because it happens to somebody every year. It just. 
honestly, it would affect. It would be a lot more making sense if it was given to Titus O'Neil because he's reached that point where he's in the joke storyline. He's in the storyline no one cares about. Where this this segment should have been with the Golden Truth. They should not have done that haunted house segment. This should have been. Or they could have had the Haunted House segment in the beginning and then ha- had it lead up to a match against the Shining Stars. And maybe the Shining Stars would have gotten the pumpkin and pie to the face. Yeah. But going back to the match on Sunday night, basically, the crowd didn't care about anything that the club did because why should we? <laughs> They've given us no... The WWE's given us no reason to care about them, so the crowd in Boston did not. Okay, the only person they really gave a crap about was Enzo Amore. They did it, when Cash came in wasn't really a big pop or anything like that. Everything Enzo did, the crowd went crazy. But it's Enzo Amore. But it's it's one of those. The WWE killed the momentum of the match before it started. By why why should we care about a team that never wins on pay per view? And it was more like it was more shock factor that the bullet club that the club won because look what happened the next night. You mm. basically ruined all progress that you made the night before. So one once again, the the match was all right, but the booking of the feud itself killed the crowd. The crowd didn't care, so. It was just a match to watch. Mm. Didn't didn't really do anything for me. Mm. Yeah, you can't win them all. Anyway, moving on to the next match and the next Hell in a Cell match, Kevin Owens defeats Seth Rollins to retain his Universal Championship. I really got nothing to real say about this. It was the it was a really good Hell in a Cell match. Like, I enjoy even, I, even with the interference. Okay, the big the okay the the one holy shit move that I was like in the of the night the, for me the one where I was like whoa what was when Seth Rollins power bomb power bombed Kevin Owens through the two tables after picking him up Kevin Owens fights it. Try, he, yeah, he really tried, to, tried fight to fight it, it. Tried to put it. Tried like even the fact where like Seth Rollins could have set him up for the Styles Clash, because that's where that's how big, that's how bad Kevin Owens is fighting it. Okay, mm. but he, but really, even even with the interference, it drives the story forward. If if the interference is just to interfere then then it sucks okay but the fact that it drove the story forward into the next night and beyond i'm like i'm okay with it 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 brings chris jericho's douche douche character to an all-new high with the key of jericho lock it in man i was i was like this this dude this dude has now gotten a key over he's gotten a key a list a potted plant and a scarf over this year. This man can do no wrong. Seriously. He's the best thing you've got going on Raw right now. <laughs> I'm I'm actually going to I'm probably going to be the only one saying this here. This is per, this is honestly my favorite Hell in a Cell match. Oh, I'm saying it. Of oh, good. Night? Of the night. Mhm. Okay. I thought you were saying of all time of like wait. Oh, of all, please. Of all time. Yeah. I mean, it was good, I, but it was like, no, no, it wasn't no, that no. good. No, 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 no. There has been a lot better Hell in a Cell matches. Shame on you for thinking that. Do, do but I yeah, wish... but of the night, hey, this, is, this, is in, actually, this has actually been the, this is my Hell in a Cell match of the night. I will not, I will not argue this might, that point. I'm, I'm not even going to say Hell in a Cell match of the night. I'm going to say that this was my match of the night. Just you know what? match I'll, of the night in total. I'll, I'll, get, I'll second that. Because really think about yeah, I'll, I'll second that. Yeah, because everything was crisp. It, like I said, compare it to the Reigns Rusev match where it started slow. Okay, this did not start slow. This was bludgeoning from the get go. Okay, mm-hmm. this they were beating the crap out of each other, and and I I love the comedy spot of Kevin Owens not knowing how to use the. Uh, 
not knowing how to use the, the fire, fire extinguisher, extinguisher. And, he, and he sets it off at the wrong time when he's holding it straight up into the referee. Honestly, face. honestly, I think that was planned. No, I think that was like made to look but, like an accident, but, but it was a way for them to open the door yeah. so Jericho can get in. But it was, a, but at the time, I was like, "This is great comedy, man." Whether it's planned or not, this is great comedy because Kevin Owens is is looking around like, "How do how." I'm from Canada. How do I know what a fire extinguisher is? <laughs> we don't have any fires. It's too cold around here. Yeah. But, I mean, there were some great near falls. Like, and Rollins comes out of this. Do I wish that Kevin Owens could win a title match clean? Sure. Of course. But if the, if the deal here is to make... Seth Rollins an even more sympathetic character because I had no sympathy for him going into coming out of the Night of Champions match because he was still acting the he was still acting like the um, whiny crybaby that he was before he left Mm -hmm. so I had no sympathy for that Seth Rollins I have a whole hell of a lot of sympathy for this one Mm. because because this is a Seth Rollins I want to see the guy the guy who doesn't whine about it, he comes out and 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 takes control of the situation. Like the night after, when he beats the crap out of both of them mm. to save Roman Reigns. Agreed. Which, which could turn into something, a mini Shield reunion, if you will. <laughs> Speaking of which, there was this one meme. In fact, I'm just, I'm pulling a meme here. Uh, of of the picture of Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. It's like, we have a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion about to take place on Raw, and Dean is on SmackDown stuck with James. Pretty much. But Survivor it's actually, Series is coming up. But it's actually kind of funny, because I read the response, like the comments of response. I'm like, well, honestly, looking who Seth Rollins has as a partner, I pick James any day of the week. <laughs> Well, what if it's like this? Okay. <laughs> Here's my thought. Okay. Reigns and Rollins turn on Jericho in the Survivor Series match while Dean Ambrose is facing Jericho. You get a shield power bomb, and then it goes back to. And S- Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins just walk out, walk away. No, just they they block Kevin Owens. They block or they try to block Braun Strowman. Okay, and Dean Ambrose just takes the pin on Jericho, and then and then D- Dean Ambrose tags out, and then the match goes back to normal. Braun Strowman and Baron Corbin, I see themselves getting to both taken out by a double countout. I can see that. Mm. Well, I'm I'm saying like maybe Jericho goes out first. For any for either team, and it's because of a mini shield team up. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ways I can see this going, and honestly, I kind of want to save it just for the, just for how our uh, Survivor Series predictions are gonna go. That's... And the fact that it seems like they're moving away from Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins, and they're and they're uh, turning it into Jericho. Owens because of what happened after the match at Hell in a Cell with Jericho hitting the code breaker and Seth Rollins really coming out there for Jericho not really for Owens mm. he took Owens out but to get to Jericho yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. so I was like maybe they're moving Seth Rollins away from the title picture for now and bringing in a new challenger for whatever the pay per view is after Survivor Series I believe it is TLC for SmackDown. Yes. I'm, I mean the Raw one mm-hmm. after. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know what that's going to be. I'm just drawing a guess. I, I, I think it's TLC. I'm yeah, not I, I'm, I know I'm pretty it's sure it's event. TLC because the title, the title match is already confirmed. Bring back War Games. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, there I go. Merry but, Christmas yeah, to me. <laughs> and, and it's that simple. Quite honestly, I'm this. This will be based on the main event, but I'm saying that this match probably they they gave it their all, but this match probably should have went on last because three matches had to follow that, and it was the match of the night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Well, let's take a look at some of those and other three matches. the crowd was never really the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. First off, we had the Cruiserweight Championship match. The Brian Kendrick defeated TJ Perkins to become the new champion. What did I tell you? I, I know that I said that I wanted TJ, that TJ Perkins is going to win, but I'm secretly very happy that As am I. Brian Kendrick won because... TJ Perkins needs a personality, man. <laughs> yeah, he, he needs a personality transplant. He stat. needs more than chip tune theme music and '90s kid references. And and the fact that what happened after after their match on Raw, with the count out and TJ Perkins basically going ape shit crazy mm. on on Brian Kendrick, I'm like, hey, character, hey, <laughs> why couldn't you do this last night? <laughs> Why couldn't you do this two months ago? <laughs> when he could have, when he could have, when he could have channeled it and given a better championship run. But I forgot how to do the contra code, so I'm mad. Yeah, but I mean, first of all, <laughs> first of all, going back to what I said about the last match, crowd didn't give a shit. No, they didn't. They were, uh, they were all wiped out. They were all wiped out, and C.J. Perkins hasn't given them a reason to care. Brian Kendrick, maybe, but. The fact that this went on immediately after the title Hell in a Cell match. That was just unfortunate. The the WWE basically set these guys up to fail. Mm. They set them up to fail hard. And and the the match was alright. There was some good stuff here and there. I but basically The one big thing that I have to really say about the cruiserweights is I can't even just give it this title match. WWE isn't really doing anything with the cruiserweights. At least, like, there is little to no character except with Brian Kendrick. And and TJ Perkins looks really stupid after what happened at the end of that of the pay per view match. There I'm is, like, you know that Brian Kendrick is shady as hell. Only nineties kids will remember my matches. You know that he will do anything to win. Did, Really? All I can say is, <laughs> with WWE tr with the, and the Cruiserweights, they're simply filler to them. Simply put, WWE is just treating the Cruiserweights as filler. And, they, yeah, and when you book your first champion as stupid as they did TJ Perkins, that's what's going to happen. At, it's reached the point where WWE needs to do something, and hopefully this WWE 205 can do something to give people to get people interested in the cruiserweights cuz it's pretty much they're pretty much playing the cruiserweights what they do with some NXT talent. It's like, "Oh, they're so great on NXT, but once they come up to the main roster, who cares? They're completely different. They're at a point where it's, WWE's not caring about them. Why should we?" I think that's kind of the point of the dub, of 205 Live coming up. Just so not only can these guys get the required dates, but they'll also get more quality programming out of them when they're in a more focused environment like the Cruiserweight Classic was. I hope so. I hope this... Oh, excuse me. This 205 Live, It. I hope it basically gives a new jolt to the Cruiserweights that it desperately needs. And I think it will. I think it will. I'm very optimistic about that. But as far as yeah, this yeah, match... Yeah. Meh. Wait, I like Brian Kendrick. I like T.J. Perkins when he doesn't have to cut stupid promos all the time about '90s references. So I mean, I can't I'm like a, I can't I, I can't like a stupid character. Mm. I can't. This is too many times. Too too many times he's been stupid with Brian Kendrick. I mean, how many times are you gonna get headbutted in the face <laughs> from a handshake? How many times? How many times you you know you know this guy? He was your mentor, or so you say. Okay? You know that he'll do anything to win. The crowd's not buying into the fact that he's injured. Why would you? Because he was too busy playing Nintendo 64 and eating handy snacks after after school. To... Yeah, and if that's your character, you need to go back to <laughs> you need to go back to NXT. Go buy some more Dunkaroos, Jabroni. You need to go back to NXT and work on it because you're not good enough to be here. Actually, character wise. Serious question. Serious question to the whole room. Do they still make Dunkaroos? I've seen them. Do they ser do they seriously make Dunkaroos? I'm not 100% sure, but I do see online recipes for the Dunkaroo dipping. Uh, 
Honestly, I don't, I don't care if I'm just make myself sound like a fat ass, but I kind of <laughs> just I kind of just want to make get some like, cake frosting hey, and some, all... and some animal crackers <laughs> and then be done with it. Then we're all fat asses here because I love me some Dunkaroos. Bring back some Dunkaroos, <laughs> damn it. Anyway, moving on. Next match, Cesaro and Sheamus defeated the New Day by disqualification. Son of a bitch. <laughs> damn it. I said it last week. Disqualification or simply the New Day winning. Cesaro and Sheamus should have won the tag team championships. Because right now, we have to wait... For them to, they have to wait for another opportunity at the tag team championships because they have Survivor Series coming up. They're pretty much going to hit that demolition record, and they're not going to defend the titles. Yeah, here's here's my biggest problem with the New Day right now is not that they just keep winning, is that when they most of the time when they do win their matches, it is that it is because they win by disqualification. That's mainly why they keep winning. Yeah, they keep, so it's, keep they keep these titles. So I'm like, why are you the, why are you being booked as faces? Why? If all you're gonna do is win by disqualification, count out that whole deal. The match itself, before the ending, the match itself is pretty good. The the say what you want. Okay, these teams work well together. They do. Okay, the match was great. Okay, and then the booking shot it in the foot. Because of the fact that the WWE is all about breaking records and WWE title reigns breaking records. They did it with CM Punk with his with his reign where he, where he started cheating all the time and getting and winning via bullshit ways to get the record. And now we're seeing it again with the New Day. And I hate it. Mm. And it's it's actually souring the New Day for me. Mm. Like, they come out and I'm... And it used to be like, yay, good segment ahead. Now it's like, oh, these guys. Mm. Yeah, they're a little played out, but... I don't know, I'm, part of me is still encouraged by this. That maybe there's something... Maybe they're sort of testing the waters before they pull the trigger on taking the title off the New Day. Should have happened a while pissed. ago. It, the only reason, the only reason, it's it's not because of how good a team they are or anything like that. The only reason they have the titles right now is to break a record. Mm. It's obvious. They should have lost it in the middle of summer. <laughs> oh, you know, you can only look backwards so much. But just at well, the I'm up- looking backwards, and it it's it's not the new day title reign is not entertaining for me anymore. Mm. That's just it. It is what it is, and the fact that if if they were winning legitly, fine, I'd be cool with it. No, but they're winning by disqualification, and they're the face team. <laughs> But on the other hand... It makes there, no sense. <laughs> on the other hand, there is one good thing about this whole situation. Dunkaroos still exist. They're in Canada. You have to get them in... You have to get them off of Amazon off for apparently like 12 bucks for a five pack or something ridiculous like that. But Dunkaroos still exist. If <laughs> Dunkaroos still exist and they can survive the 90s... Then we can survive the New Day title reign, damn it. That's all I got to say about that. Mm. I really got... I pretty much said all I needed to say about this one. Mm -hmm. It's now Cesaro and Sheamus, their whole couple... Their last two to three months, it's a complete waste. Because the whole point of them was to basically overcome, overcome their differences and win the tag team championships they should have never had their match on raw where they actually did win clean that win should have been at the paper at the pay-per-view i honestly i hope that cesaro uh challenge uh, accepts ziggler's challenge for the intercontinental championship and he wins and goes to smackdown mm-hmm. that's what i want now 
Because honestly, I don't want to see. I don't. Now I'm at the point where it's now just. It's a waste of time to see them like, oh, we're actually starting to be friends. And then it, the segment ends with them arguing again. I just chalk that one up to indecisive. I'm I'm not script writing. I'm not period. about that. I'm like the, the DQ finish. I'm like if you're gonna if you're gonna kill it off in one match, okay, have the new day win. If you're gonna kill it off, that's why I don't see it being Sheamus or Cesaro. Who are who are gonna go after the Intercontinental title? Because, okay, it was a disqualification finish. There's got to be a rematch. Oh, I'm sure there that's will how, be. There's, all, so there's still time for them to correct their mistake, in my eyes. The mistake should have never happened. Well, I could say the same thing about if that. They gonna, if they were going to do this, they should have waited until after the record was broken. If they were going to do this mismatch tag team partner thing and make them go after the tag team titles, it should have happened after the record was broken because this is dumb. A DQ oh finish boy, I'm is already on. You got a point there. But anyway, let's talk about the one the one last thing that isn't quite bullshit, but maybe it is a little bit. We've got the, our main event, Charlotte defeating Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's title inside the first ever Women's Hell in a Cell. Breaking down for me, fellas. At first, I thought that this entire match was just going to be Sasha Banks pulling the Mick Foley. I know. As the soon as I saw match, that, I was just. Uh, I, I was like, oh, I was really? They're doing this? They're well, doing really, this again? Well, honestly, think about it. She kind of did pull the Mick Foley. Well, I mean. She still lost. <laughs> no, but it's also. You're not wrong. But it's also. Are you <laughs> I didn't gonna think do, of that, but you're not wrong. Are you going to do everything that, ha- that happened in that match that made him famous? Are you going to do everything? Like, um, but I can't even. I can't even agree to like the table spot. That I can't even say. I can't even say that like that's a callback to Shawn Michaels. Cause one thing, it didn't happen off the top, the side of the cell. She got power bombed through the Probably table. Probably smart. As, Honestly, as, like as oh, much it, as I as as much as I hate to say it, I don't think the ladies could take a fall from that high off the cell. Oh, I don't think. Considering all the bumps that Sasha that Sasha took in this match, she's gonna have a very short career. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. But it's the the I at first I was like, oh, is this really what this is gonna be? Because if it's just a rehash, I'm not gonna like it. But they put this match together extremely well. They did. Was it enough for a main event spot? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But as mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned, the ladies did the best they could, uh, wrestling wise, with what they were given. Yeah, I'm okay. still not sure who encouraged all the uh, throwbacks to past Hell in a Cell matches. It just seemed like way too much of a ham fisted attempt to give credibility when all they really need to do was just go out there and have a yeah. damn good match like they're capable of doing. And the, and the fact that after all of the brutality all of it all it took was one natural selection Yeah, there was, I'm, there I'm was like, a botch there. I, I'm, I'm convinced that table was meant to break. Me too. Yeah, it's like one of those it's the, the ending uh, the match itself for me was good. The ending was wonky, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Mm. I'm not. I don't know how I feel about the booking of most the of the match was was uh, wonky. I don't think Charlotte. I don't think the table was supposed to collapse when Charlotte fell on it. In that one spot with outside the ropes, Charlotte like kind of fell on the on the uh, the table. But it the, look, didn't look like the table was supposed to break. Was supposed to break. It was just because the leg went out. I think there was supposed to be a high. There was supposed to be a high risk move with Sasha, like doing a dive through the table. The one thing that I can really say about this Hell in the Cell match, I'm, I'm actually just going to end it, end my view on it like this. 
the way I, I looked at all three Hell in the Cell matches, and it was only Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins that actually got the This Is Awesome chant. Char- I like Charlotte and Sasha Banks match. It had mo- it had some good brutal moments. Like the fact that the table didn't break and she had to keep throwing Sasha on it. I'm like, this is actually kind of brutal. Yeah, I'm like, I don't. That wasn't supposed to happen, but this is it's actually still, still, kind of making it better. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> makes it better. But I was never. It is not just because I wasn't invested in the match to begin with. It's just the fact, like, I was going into it open-minded, and all I can say is, it didn't, it honestly left no, left no mark for me. Yeah. Like, I was, I was even talking, uh, I was even talking to, uh, to Charlie about this. I'm like, this, I noticed, this match hasn't gotten a This Is Awesome chant, and honestly, it doesn't deserve an awesome, This Is Awesome chant. And the match went on, and it ended, and I'm like, you know what? I, was, I wasn't impressed. I really wasn't. The only thing I was impressed with was how much Charlotte was actually taking Sasha Banks' tights and jamming it up her ass so you can actually see those glorious cheeks of hers. Truth. <laughs> <laughs> For the sake of all current and future relationships, I will pass that. I will, not, I will say no comment to that. <laughs> Lots of comments over here. Ha ha ha! But Fire away, sir. Well, she does have a great ass. Indeed, she does. I won't go as far as to say it didn't do anything for me. I didn't hate watching it. And I think they did the most that they could do with what they were given. A lot of stuff went wrong. But tables breaking when they shouldn't aren't the fault of them. But what happened for me, okay, for me the match went on a little too long. It lasted a, it lasted a little longer than it should have because at the end I was getting worn out and was like, can we end it already, please? If, I mean, it, but, and, and the fact that the winner, okay, I, I don't believe that... The booking was the right choice. I don't believe that Charlotte should have won it back. And I don't believe... Just just one natural selection after all of that brutality. I was like, really? That's yeah, it? It, <laughs> it, like, it obviously didn't... It well, wasn't the intended effect. It wasn't the intended effect. I know she was supposed to go through the table at some point. but But I was like... Then, then, then do something, do something brutal to end the match. Not just a natural selection. Put her, put her in the, put her in the figure eight with the back, with the, with her back all screwed up, and have her folded up like a pretzel until she passes out or something. Then you can have your Mick Foley moment. Yeah. Okay. The finish. <laughs> Yeah, the finish obviously didn't didn't really satisfy, but at the same time, I was like, make her pass out. That's how, that's how you make me remember remember a ladies Hell in a Cell match. Yeah, that's it. yeah. Again, the the set, the ending wasn't quite satisfying, but if there's one good thing I took, can take away from this, it's that Charlotte looked like even more of a bigger juggernaut. Yes. Yeah, like she. She looked like a woman playing with a child, and it was, it was awesome in its own way. It covered up some of Charlotte's flaws. Again, it was that kind of element that made me not totally be disappointed in the in the match like this. Yeah, I won't say I'm disappointed because I came in skeptical. Anyone who listened last week knows this, so I was like, this. The, for me, this wasn't bad. Okay, it, it ranks second in the ma- in Hell in a Cell matches for me, just because Roman Reigns versus Rusev was boring to me. Mm. This actually had some moments of brutality where I was like, "Oh, okay, okay. wasn't expecting that out of the out of the females." And and for that it gets a little bit of a leg up, 
but should this have been the main event goes back to what I was saying before last week I, I it, it was it was hard enough on these ladies just to give them a hell in a cell match okay now you gotta put them in the main event pressure's on and you get mistakes yeah which and is I, what and which is what happened and you know what that's ultimately the the risk you run by it'll happen with anybody in any in the same position sometimes yeah. you're gonna have a a subpar match sometimes you're gonna have a subpar main event that's that's it's the risk you run no matter who you are i think that they should have given the ladies a hell in a cell match maybe put it halfway through the card this year then just just to like test out the waters and whatever and then set up a bit and then see how the feuds go and if a feud have and if a feud hits like because let's face it okay charlotte and sasha banks has been going on since wrestlemania mm -hmm. okay it was time for it to end okay and you know what but but okay it was also at the point where people where people don't care it was also at the point where people don't really where people were like ended already i don't care to watch anymore mm. so it's so i i think that they were given a spot that they couldn't possibly live up to i wouldn't say they couldn't possibly live up to it I'm, I'm, and I'm honestly, I hear what you're saying, but I'm still inclined to disagree with you just because, you know what, with all the publicity they want to talk about, you know, women's revolution, blah, 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 whatever you, label you want to put on it, I'm actually glad they just threw it out there. I'm glad they rolled the dice because I don't want, again, just for the reason you answered, I don't want to see this keep on going with the same thing all the time. I want, it's kind of one of those matches a lot of us saw coming as far as Charlotte and Sasha being likely to be in the main event after going to close chapter on that particular feud for the moment I'm glad that they just did it in Hell in a Cell on a person, it's more of on a personal level that I'm glad they threw it in the main event this time anyway but just because there had to be a first one now that that all bets are off all expectations are off now they're a bit more in one sense they're a bit more free to do something different next time or maybe it's just me being optimistic again who knows it, the fact still stands this match could have been a main event without on a different pay-per-view without being hell in a cell very true very true it was good enough for that anyway yeah. All I have to say, because you guys have been going on and I kind of had to step away for a quick second. Um, for me, with trying to catch what, what you guys are saying, I don't mind it being the main event. And I, sa I actually said this with Jeff and when Dave was, was our special guest uh, a couple weeks ago. I wouldn't have minded so much with them being the first women's in a hell in a cell, but it lands to the point, it goes back to my big argument why I wasn't a big fan of it before, is it's not the fact that they earned to be put, earned the right to be put in the hell in a cell. They were put in the hell in a cell because it was the gimmick of the pay-per-view. I feel like, and with you, what you said, fools, like, oh, this just puts a pause on their feud because you know they're going to fight again. The Hell in the Cell, for me personally, is the match to end all, fe the, to end the feud. Did I say that? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Okay, well, that's not what I intended at all. The intended message was, yeah, we're going to be moving on to something else. That's, this, this needs to end. We're all getting tired of it, we want something new to happen. So why not put it in Hell in a Cell? It's it was the right thing at the right time. That's what I was intending to say. Well, it's it's just being used for the gimmick. It's n it's just using for the gimmick of the cell. It's not the reason the cell exists. Oh, definitely not. 
and that's that's the part that hurts it the most. And it, like I said, it was a good match. It just did. It didn't leave that impact on me. Like let's say let's say Owens and Rollins did. It was that one that actually they used the cell to a bigger advantage and actually was more fun with it. Yeah. No one's disputing that the ladies deserve a main event. Okay, I just don't believe that they deserve that they should have gotten this one in the confines of what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Okay, like yes, they this this match can main event any pay per view. Okay, why? This one specifically put it in a put it in a rough spot. Mm-hmm. That's so, all I was going for. So final rev- final scores on uh, Hell in a Cell, gentlemen. Facial hair ratings. I honestly, it didn't leave that much of an impact on me. I there were times where I got upset, and re- like there was times that I actually did enjoy it as well. It just left the generic feeling for me so I'm just going to give this a three classic goatee it goes back to what me and Tarek have been saying since the beginning of these brand specific pay-per-views okay this this feels this felt like a roll with cells really these these you know what you're totally right. That that's spot on. <laughs> this Scarily felt, spot. And we've already had a raw. We've already had a hell in a cell on raw with mankind and Kane. Exactly. So it's but a modern a modern raw. That's just yeah. Like, yeah. So you, it's uh, it's like the it it's the same issue that they had with the first brand split, where when they do brand specific pay per views, it's not special. They try to d- hype it up to be special. But the show comes and it feels like a raw this time with added cells. <laughs> and so it's. I'm gonna go Peach Fuzz. I am. You know because, what? Because it's. If they're gonna hype it up as a pay per view, as a special event, give me something that makes it special. Cells aren't doing it anymore. Yeah. Especially honestly, three of them. Honestly, I'm going to have to join you there because I had I'm going to give it a two out of five. A peach fuzz, also. I just, there was so much of this of this show that was that I felt really let down by, and for something like Hell in a Cell, that plain and simply should not be. I wish I could give it more. There were some good points here and there, but ultimately, I was I was severely underwhelmed. Which is basically. The, which is basically how these brand specific pay per views have been since the only difference is that on SmackDown we actually get good wrestling across the board mm. with with the brand with the uh, brand split pay per views. So they get so they will get the classic OTs for me because mm-hmm. at least the wrestling is good, even though it feels mm. like a SmackDown. And I have to but say, this- <laughs> congratulations, fool. You and I tied for the most correct predictions. Yes, indeed, we did. With six, with six each. High five. High five. Sorry, Brian. You only got five. <laughs> Which one is the one that did it? I... Honestly, T.J. Perkins. Son of a you. Nintendo it was T- sixty-four it... playing motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Brian settle. Actually, really, it was the Sasha Banks and Charlotte match that kind of was the big turning point on all of us since we all picked Sasha for that one. Mm. Well, because it was the obvious choice. That, that, Honestly, I, <laughs> I really should have thought about this because it. I kind of went against my uh, my big argument for SummerSlam when it was Enzo and Cass. Sasha was the hometown hero. Vince McMahon hates hometown heroes. They want. They usually lose. I d- I should have thought about that. Ah, oh, I yeah. totally I forgot that they. That, you no you want to know why? Because we weren't paying attention to, to where Hell in a Cell was. Exactly. I, didn't, I for, <laughs> totally <laughs> forgot it was in Boston. And then you look and you see it's in Boston, and you're like, "Oh no!" Oh man. <laughs> well, even so, fool, do you have any more scholars' quick talk for us? Well, here's the th- here's the thing. I'm actually uh, this one is going to be. You, we're just simply going to give a simple, a quick talk answer. 
But instead of Scholar's Quick Talk, since we do it throughout the show anyway, so Scholar's Quick Talk is throughout the show. The final segment that I'm going to propose, it's no longer topics of discussion. It's just simply called Raw versus SmackDown. And I'm actually going to, I'm at, for the sh- episode, I'm actually going to use that, the Raw versus SmackDown logo from video games for this one because I don't care. It's a, it's a fun logo and I, we're old school. Okay. So to simply put, the final, the final segment is just Raw versus SmackDown, which one was the better show. And because we're short on time anyway, we're just going to be, we're just going to give a scholar's quick talk answer. SmackDown by default concern, I didn't watch Raw at all because of Halloween reasons. Well, I I rewatched Raw. SmackDown Raw bored me. They Raw really the biggest highlight with Raw was Goldberg. Jack. The highlight for me was was the uh, segment with with Jericho talking and Roman Reigns and and the and the reactions. And I I just also I do like what they're doing with Braun Strowman. How he's actually yeah. like you know what? I'm sick of this bullshit. That you're giving me local jobbers. I'm glad somebody is actually calling out that. It's like, why are you feeding me jobbers? Yeah. I want competition, damn it. And as good... I actually do like that they're actually starting the build for Survivor Series. But honestly, it really is. SmackDown, they know what to do with their wrestlers. Plus, Dolph Ziggler giving op- pretty much starting his own open challenge thing with the Intercontinental title, making me a happy scholar. And once again, I hope it's Cesaro. Hey. Hey, I think we all uh, we all know where we all stand by now. Then you know what? Now it's time to let us, you let us know what you think. So, of course, drop us a line at all the usual methods. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you, uh, you're feeling saucy and you want to hear more. Saucy. Saucy. Of course, you can also like us on Facebook. Just look for The Scholars Wrestling Show. And you can also join us on our live commentary Look for us on Twitter. Look, search us for the Scholars Scholars O W for our main page for all the latest web for all the latest episode updates. Fool, where can they reach you on your personal account? You can find me at the Avataric. Brian. You can find me at Atomic Beanpole. No sauce required. <laughs> and you can find me at I'm Robbie Rage, all one word. Feel saucy along with us. Have a great time. It's great. Lot live commentary on every single show. Brian's cracking up. You know you love it. And you know who we are. We are the scholars of wrestling. You have just been schooled. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Stay saucy, everybody. Saucy for everyone. Really? Saucy guys? What is wrong with you?